Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to Broadway SF's uh, Instagram Live series for Broadway SF From Home. My name is Jonathan Amores and I'm the Digital Marketing Manager of Broadway SF. And we are so excited to bring you a special guest today. I'll, I'll bring him in. Hello. Hi. Hi, <laughs> good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Of course, thanks for having me. Yeah, so, so we're very excited to, to have you on today. So for people that are watching us today, just I'll just give a little bit about 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 your you and your your career. So you were last uh, you you were uh, you were wizard in uh, the falsetto in falsettos on the national tour. And you were last at the Golden Gate Theater just about a year ago, uh, last yeah. March and April. Um, and Nick, you uh, originated and starred as Adam and slash Felicia in the Tony Award winning uh, Broadway musical Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. And you were also the, the final act with the star as Fiero in the first national tour of Wicked as well. Um, and you have a vast Broadway credit to uh, Chorus Line, Guys and Dolls, Chicago, La Caja Full, and The Pirate Queen. And you've been in um, TV and film, uh, such as uh, The Other Two and Sex in the City Two, and also the upcoming musical film Still Waiting in the Wings, uh, which we can talk about later as well. And so we are very excited to have you here. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, uh, so how, how are you? Uh, how are you doing these days? Um, I'm okay, actually. I uh, started to get sick again, like, three days ago. Um, oh. So I just, I'm, I'm out of the city. I'm, uh, I was living in LA when this all happened. And I, I went back to New York um, to be with my partner. And we uh, as soon as Broadway was shut down, we left the city and we haven't been back since, um, aside to <laughs> visit our place and pick up mail and stuff. But um, we both started feeling sick again um, and went to the doctor yesterday to get oh, retested wow. again, um, because apparently you can get it more than once. So that was news to both of us. Um, oh, wow. But uh, we're, we're feeling a little better today. The last two days Good. have been rough with like fevers and chills and all that stuff. Um, but we hopefully are on the mend. Um, yes, yeah. Our fingers are crossed and, and yeah, and, and thank you so much for, for making the time to, to, to join us today and yeah, yeah sending you all the, the healing <laughs> vibes. No, it's good to have an activity or something to, you know, keep us occupied. But right. we are, in, we're in a beautiful, um, a beautiful house and in great country, um, beautiful landscape and everything. So it's, it's a good, we're in a good place. It just sucks that we aren't feeling that great again, but. Right. Well, yeah. hopefully, yeah, you're on, on the road to recovery soon. Um, and I guess, yeah, just, 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 to, just to open up, like how, how are you and your partner staying positive during these times and, and finding ways to, to find joy in, in, in this time that we're living in? Um, well, I, for us, this is, you know, we both are actors and mm -hmm. it's hard to get time together you know, it's just sort of the the choice that we've, I don't know, we didn't have a choice. It was just, we both, we met on the show and this has been our life forever, but it's it's kind of in a way been a blessing that we have time together without interruption because normally, <laughs> you know, he's in the city, he's busy with a show and I've been away on the road. I've living, I was living on the opposite coast. So, you know, we our our schedules have never completely aligned unless we're on a project together um, where we spend this much time together, you know, wake up, like spend time with our dog, mm -hmm. the ritual, the ritual of just like making breakfast, lunch, dinner together, all those, you know, sort of day to day chores that we don't um, have the luxury of executing together. Um, we've been able to do I mean, we've been together for almost 10 years. So this is, mm -hmm. in a way, um, like a renewal for us. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of been special. But uh, also just tr trying to be present in the day and not just like scrolling on our phone or like wishing this will pass so that, um, you know, days to just, I know obviously want it to be over with, but for the time to just be wished away, like each day I, I try to, like, he's very good at making lists and having an agenda. I'm not, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of a good balance between like just going on a walk with our dog or playing outside or, um, because we have the luxury of being in the Catskill mountains to go on like a hike or, mm -hmm. Um, we also like, I've been writing a couple things, doing some creative things during the day. Um, and we're, we're working on something with like a group of actors via zoom. So that has been, oh, fun. um, 
Okay, and you actually, know, oh yeah, sorry, I, have, just... I have a picture pulled up um, from a Broadway article about, about you and Kyle. Oh yeah, and, and our, uh, oh, that's our last dog. That was our first dog, Lady. Oh. Yeah, that's actually us on the road with Wicked on the, I think on the way home, well, after we closed the tour in Los Angeles, we actually drove from LA back to New York. Oh, wow. And so we did this like epic road trip of like, going, we went to Zion, Mount Rushmore, um, Yellowstone Park. I mean, we, we tried to make it, uh, you know, without a timeline, just sort of working our way back to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was, it was incredible. But that, our, oh, our sweet dog, she was 16 and a half when she passed, but um, oh. was, uh, we missed her every day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, some, some happy memories. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. And so, so, so you and, um, you and Kyle, so you said that you met um, about 10, 10 years ago, you said. Um, and so you met doing um, Priscilla Queen of the Desert. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And what was, what was the story between the two? How, 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 how the two of you met? Um, well, we, it was, I think, within like the first few days of rehearsal i mean he caught my eyes a handsome guy and really talented and uh we our choreographer like anytime i had to be uh, partnered or lifted or anything he would always put us together and we sort of just uh, kind of were flirty and developed this dynamic and then we took the show um to toronto for the out of town tryout at the mm -hmm. princess of wales and we were there for several months and it just sort of ha like happened and we thought maybe it would be, um, you know, just like run its course, like a showman mm -hmm. situation. And um, then we got back to New York and I remember like having a conversation with him in Times Square, like leaving the theater one day and asking him if he wanted to be my, be my boyfriend. And then here we are. And then we had the luxury, you know, of doing, we had a, a great opportunity to, to work together again on Wicked a couple of years mm -hmm. after, um, which is so rare that you ever get to work with your significant other that's also in the in this business so right um, yeah in multiple projects that's amazing yeah and we've um we've worked together a lot through broadway dreams um teaching all over the country together and um yeah it's really it's been great okay great yeah that sounds really special that's yeah great. yeah and actually if, if you don't mind we can j jump a little um forward yeah. here and want to talk to you about a little <clears throat> bit about um falsettos and your experience in the show um so actually, I, we do have a, um, a fan question that I'll, that I'll pull up here. Um, so this is from, uh, let's see, is it, this is from uh, Yuna Smirnoff. And, and she asks, how do you, how do you feel that Wizard, uh, playing Wizard has impacted you? So you played Wizard in Falsettos about a year ago. And so, so a year, a year later, how, how, how has the playing that role um, impacted you? I still um, carry that experience with me. I think about it every day. Um, it, it's, it's a, a musical that requires so much of its actors and mm -hmm. it's a show that I wanted to do since college and, um, to get to do it with James Lapine and Bill Finn and that cast was honestly, it's just going to be one of those things in my life that I will never forget. I'm just so fortunate that it happened. Um, it, it's seven actors telling an incredibly moving story that I think transcends um, the LGBTQ community. It, it really is any, um, we always said this on the road, is that anybody with a pulse can't, can't leave that theater without feeling something profound. And I think you can relate to it in some way, but that character was so um, complex and had such a beautiful trajectory from the beginning to the end of the show and it's uh, the most challenging um or, or required the most of me and and was a culmination of like everything as an actor that i always like hoped i'd get to do someday because mm -hmm. it was everything it was like right. it's just so rich it's like a mine of beautiful juicy um difficult things to unpack in him and um, I, it's made me a better actor. It's made me a better singer. It's, um, I, with working with James and the, and the, and my castmates, I just learned so much from them. Mm -hmm. Um, he, one thing I'll take away from James is that he just is like such a 
barometer of truth and mm. and putting and really encourages you to just put your trust in the material and not try to put anything on it like rely on this on the material to tell the story and just just resonate with you and be honest without trying to like do anything extra and i feel like every day was i learned something new from it and i hope i get to do the show again someday honestly I, we were we were six months felt like like a perfect amount of time to be away from home on the road with it <laughs> um because it is so dense like i would leave the theater and be so emotional for like the next two hours every night yeah. like anything would make me cry but i was so like sad i just felt so grat like a sense of like satisfaction from doing the show but it also <laughs> like very it weighed on all of us too because it was such just a heavy beautiful story Right. Um, yes, I have a, um, a picture of you with, with you with uh, Max von Essen, who played Marvin. Yeah, yeah. I love him to death. Yeah, it seems like you He's... had you. Yeah, everyone in the cast was was so phenomenal. Phenomenal, excuse me. And, mm -hmm. and you had all. It seems like you had such close relationships with everyone in the cast. A yeah, tiny I mean, family, if you will. <laughs> absolutely. Um, wait, how do I have to get rid of this? Oh. Uh, yeah, it, it is a, it's a group that we, we still, we've done like, um, Zoom chats together, like had a, had a reunion and, um. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, it really felt like a family. I mean, like, that's what I think the show kind of demands of the actors in it is to, is to have that sense of relationship, that type of bond with each other, because it is so real. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing how, I mean, I, I've known Max um, since I moved to New York in 2005. And oh, great. we actually, um, we did, we, I was doing a chorus line while he was doing Les Mis. And hmm. um, I think it's the Broadhurst and the Schoenfeld connect through this back little doorway, this like little oh, alleyway. Yeah. And so we would like, look off stage right sometimes and there'd be cast members of Les Mis when they weren't on stage or like you know between scenes or something if they had a break would be like off in the wings like watching our stage managers were very cool with this which I don't know if this is like <laughs> allowed generally but um right. they, would, they would be like watching us dance the show and then um we would occasionally if we had a oh. minute like creep over and and I would like look off and see Max in the wings and stuff and it was crazy that you know however many years later we got to do the show together and it was our first time we've we've done other projects together but concerts and things mm. and benefits never never a full musical so we already had this beautiful friendship established which i think was a huge help because we only really we rehearsed the show for two weeks in new york before we left the city with it um mm. so I'm, I'm really thankful that we had uh, that's that foundation so that we could be that vulnerable with each other. And it just from now, now it's like, he is literally one of my, he is a part of my heart, like one of my best friends. And I can't oh. imagine life without, I mean, it's, I talk to him, like we, we text each other every single day since the project ended. Oh, so, wow, that's great. <laughs> yeah. But, but Eden, Eden and I barely knew each other before. Um, you know, obviously I've, have been a fan of hers forever. And yes. um, <laughs> she, I brought her home to my hometown after the show closed and we, I was just texting with her five minutes before I started this. I mean, she is. Oh, great! She is. She is like a a precious crystal. Like, I I have. It's just amazing. Nick Blameyer, Brianna, all of Audrey. I mean, everyone is just. It's a. It's a, they did a really beautiful job of putting together that group. I'm. I can't imagine doing it with anybody else. Oh. Yeah, and you can definitely you could you could see that that love that you had for each other on stage, and it really it really shone through to the audience. And we actually have a um, a question from a live viewer right now. Um, so Chris Shutt asks, um, "What was more challenging, um, the sung through libretto or that amazing set choreography with the blocks?" Oh, actually, <laughs> um, I think doing the libretto. I think that was. The, the blocks actually became second nature. It was like, it's genius. I think it's genius. When I saw the revival, I was like, oh my God, who mm -hmm. thought of that? Like, how did they, the concept I thought was genius and then the execution of it and uh, how, 
how fluid and, and easy every transition would be between like, okay, now we're in a living room, now we're in a shrink's office. Now, I mean, it just was like so flawless. And mm -hmm. it honestly helped our personal journeys through the show. Like, oh, now we do this. It was all motivated in some way. It wasn't just like, and now I'm moving a block. I mean, they gave us reasons why everything was happening. And so for me, I never had to write it down. That was like my big, I think when we started knowing we only had two weeks, I was nervous about how am I going to remember where to put all these blocks and how they <laughs> interlock and make everything Wait, and, fit together. Mm -hmm. But um, I would go home every night after rehearsal and just connect the dots in my mind. I never wrote it down and I would come the next day and, and it would just be sort of like in my body. It was like mm -hmm. choreography in a way. Um, okay. But I love that block. We named the block Stephanie Block. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and what was it like getting to, to bring the story of falsettos across the country and, and especially to San Francisco? Re I mean, profound. It was just mm -hmm. very, so special to be able to bring that to life and see how audiences connected with it. I mean, it is a, in some places, a polarizing show and mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't familiar with it which i thought was really important to bring a show like that that doesn't have necessarily a, a mass audience um and expose people to it and especially in a place like san francisco that was so hit early on by aids it just was leaving the theater every day i mean he Nope, it looks like we have a little bit of connectivity. Let's see if we can get Nick back in here. Ooh. I'm back. Oh, we're back. Great. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, leaving the stage door and talking to people about their personal stories about how they lost their partner or mm. a parent or a loved one just made it so real and personal and important that the story is told, you know, it just reminded us like how, the power that theater has. And um, it was something I'll never forget. Yeah. And, and I know that, that you, you said previously that, that playing wizard was, was a dream role for you. Um, what was, what was the, your audition story for, for the show and, and, ha and, um, and how well did you know the falsehood for, before joining the tour? Well, when I was in school, um, a lot of guys would sing uh, music from the score. And so that's when I first, I first knew of the show because of the music. Mm -hmm. And I really just love, I love how um, Bill, I love his melodies. And I also just love uh, the pathology of his songs, how they just really make sense with the storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something really special about the show as well, is that like, it was easy to commit to memory because it all made so much sense, like the flow of it all. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I understood what the show was about, and I was as part as a you know gay kid in college, I was like, oh my god, this is about like my people. Yeah. Um, that really made me fall in love with it, and so I just I felt I I somehow just connected with this character and was like, someday I want to play that man when I'm ready to, um, and so. I was, it's kind of b bizarre. I was on, when I was on tour with Wicked, I um, <clears throat> was working with Alison Frazier, who was Trina in some of the early inceptions of the show in Trousers um, mm. and I think Falsetto Land. She, she, was, she was the original Trina and she is close with James Pine and she heard that the show was going to be revived and she was like, Nick, because she was playing Madame Morrible. And she was like, Nick, you've got to play, you, you are a wizard, you have to play wizard. And so I was like, I agree, but how, I mean, how, can you help me make this happen? <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I just reached out to um, Jordan Roth at the time. This is like mm -hmm. years ago. This is before the revival even happened in New York and just emailed him and said like, I would love to be a part of this. Like, please keep me in consideration. And um, you know, the show had kind of been assembled with the stars at the time um, as the project was being packaged and talked about it was like we're gonna have these actors so they weren't really auditioning people for the roles uh, mm. for most of them at least for mm. um marvin and wizard and uh so i kind of was like all right it's not meant to be it's not right now um 
And then when I heard, I heard the rumblings that the tour was going to happen, I was like, I've got to do it. I have to do it. So like out of the blue, I was in Boston visiting Kyle because he was up there with um, Moulin Rouge out of town. Mm -hmm. And my manager called me and said, uh, look, there's a concert in Chicago. It's like a preview of everything that's going to tour through. It's called Broadway in Chicago in Millennium Park. 20,000 people. Um, it's like, it was in a few days. They're like, can you, um, they, they asked if you would sing, um, what would I do as wizard? And I was like, what, who did? And he's like, well, James <laughs> Pine asked casting to get in touch with us and see if you would do it. And I was like, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So I looked over the music and like, they booked me a flight and I got there and we had one rehearsal and then we did the concert and um, James emailed me. I just was like blown away. He's like, Oh, I watched it. It was beautiful. I wish I could have like had the chance to be there. And, mm. you know, um, so there was like this, I was like, okay, uh, is I must be like in someone's brain for the show. Mm. This is happening. And um, so then like a couple weeks later, um, they my manager called and said will you have a session with james uh it's like i don't know in a, in a week or two and i was supposed to leave to go do a show in canada um in calgary this new musical called mary and max that i've been a part of from like the beginning um workshops and stuff so it was its first like fully produced production and mm -hmm. i i had to like call that i and make sure that like i could come late to start rehearsals for that and change all my international flights and it was like kind of oh, wow. difficult but um, mm -hmm. I could only then be at the audition for falsettos like that day. I couldn't go to callbacks. I couldn't go through any more of the process. I just was like, I have one opportunity to book this job and that's it. So mm -hmm. it was like a lot of pressure on this moment. It was like very early in the morning, I think on like a Wednesday. And I had to sing um, games I play and you got to die sometime. And then a song of my choice, which is so... Ooh. Um, on a rare occurrence these days. I normally only sing material from the show I'm auditioning for or the project it is. Mm -hmm. So um, I sang Good Thing Going because of the Sondheim connection with James. And I love that song. It used to be like my go-to song in college. And it also just made sense with like a relationship that ended. And um, it just felt like it could have been from falsettos in a way. Right. So I sang that first and then I sang um, games I play twice and they record they built they filmed it so that they'd have it since I couldn't come back hmm. and then James was like well thank you so much like I I know you have to catch a flight and well, you know we have your other video of you singing what would I do um in mm -hmm. Chicago right. and I was like well what about you gotta die sometime it's like the crux of the show for wizard and I was like yeah, it's like uh -huh. such a beautiful acting piece and I was like i what about that? He's like, oh no, I'm, I'm, I think you're good. Like, I know you've got, we're, we're appreciative that you rearranged to like come in. He was like, so nice. And I was also like in a room with James Lapine for the first time. So I was like, kind of losing my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Um, no, I'm gonna do that one now. I'm gonna sing that one for you. Like I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm> great. <laughs> yeah, take advantage of that moment. Exactly. I was like, look, I don't, this is it. This is like your opportunity. So you either book right. it or you don't. Yeah. So, um, so we started it and um, I, did, I did the whole thing. And afterwards he was like, wow, I, I really had no idea that you were capable of this. And it was like such a beautiful moment in my life. Mm -hmm. And I remember like, I was so, it felt like I was living, it was one of those auditions where you kind of forget you're auditioning and are just like living in that, moment and yeah. and it felt like i was actually living that character and doing it on stage which is like i i live for those moments because i usually end up booking when that happens which i can count with like <laughs> one hand when that happens but yeah. um i you laugh feel that I connection went, yes it just felt like i was it was i was present with wizard and um mm -hmm. i i flew back to canada i flew to canada started rehearsals and then i think like in two weeks um I got the phone call that I got the job. So like, I only had to go in that one day, but I had to just like lay it all on the table. Um, Amazing. And sort of, I take the, like, just take, take the room, take control. Because yeah. even like later on, my friend Eric Sanagata, who was the associate director on the show, said they kept coming back to the video of me singing that song, which is like kind of what sealed the deal. So mm -hmm. that's crazy. I mean, 
<laughs> Thank God I did. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to take those those big risks. Yeah. And then they'll they'll pay off. That's great. And I have another question from a um, from a fan here to to transition talking about dream roles. Um, let's see, Bruce uh, uh, Sat asks if you could cast yourself in your next role, what would it be? Is there other any? Do you have other other dream roles uh, up there in in the theater world or, or beyond? I I want to like I want the experience of originating something again. Um, that mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm the ideal for me rather than I'd love to obviously um replace in a show a hundred percent would be down if I was excited about it um but there's nothing like being a part of the of, of the building process from the ground up and having input and and making choices that then become the fabric of the show um and the character <laughs> That to me is the most satisfying work that I've done. And I look forward to that again. Yeah, and so, so you were able to, to originate um, the role in, in, a role in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. And so what was, what was that experience like for you? One of the most, uh, I, uh, I don't even have words really for it. It was just such a beautiful time in my life and so exciting. And it was like everything that you imagined about like the the beautiful sort of like glamorized things about Broadway, like that was all sort of wrapped up in that experience. Um, yeah. Just the show, the size of the show, the scope of it, like the magnitude of what I got to do in the show. Um, all of it felt like a dream from beginning to end. I mean, it just was like, what a beautiful ride. Um, and it was a show that it was like a, a defining moment in my career because it was the first time I, was starring in a musical and originating something. It was like, mm -hmm. it took me out of the ensemble and wasn't understudying anymore. And um, it really changed the path of my, of my life in a lot of ways. Um, and it was just so fun to do. It was yeah, so and much I have fun. A, I have a picture here, a production photo. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, it um, looks like a really fabulous show. It was just so over the top and so it had such a beautiful heart underneath all of the crazy spectacle and costumes and, um, you know, and, uh, Tony Sheldon and Will Swenson really, I, I feel like t just yeah. treated me as an equal from day one and they had, you know, so much experience and um, something and just and create he was I also like he was so fantastic he just would allow us to kind of find things and and he just wanted to make everybody laugh and I feel I feel like you could feel that in the show it was just such a positive beautiful energy about it um but I loved going to work every single day it was just I, I would pinch myself I mean I would walk to the t to the palace and see my face on the billboard out front mm -hmm. like a kid from Erie, Pennsylvania, who just like dreamed of dancing in a musical one day. And then that all of a sudden was my life. It was like, I still can't believe, you know, it's crazy. It's just nuts. Um, uh, but it was, yeah. So that, that show getting to, you know, we kind of revamped um, the Americanized version in the, in the sense that my character was obsessed with Madonna and not um, Kylie Minogue, like mm -hmm. the London and Australian production. And um, so the selection of those songs and uh, they, I, my originally was, they talked about me doing um, like a virgin at the end of the show and that being my last number. And I suggested like a prayer. I was like, what about like a prayer? I love that song. And it felt like the sentiment made sense. And they were like, oh, that's a great idea. And so the next day they came in with an arrangement of it. We kind of like figured out keys and like a section of the song to do. And then that was in the show. It just was like, I don't know, to have, you know, your, your like guts as part of it is really cool. Yeah, and, and so, so you mentioned that, that you, uh, you're from Erie, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And, and so how did, what, what was, um, how did you discover musical theater? Did you always know you wanted to be on Broadway? And what was that, that path for you like? Yeah, I, um, my, I was like nine years old. I mean, I was, I was like always up to something. Like I did gymnastics as like a really little kid. And mm -hmm. I think, I had done some, I like auditioned for like an 
LA Law commercial when I was really young and did some like child modeling and, you know, yeah. was in ac acting classes and stuff at, at a very young age. And then, and then found my way to gymnastics. And then I, on uh, New Year's Eve, my mom took me to uh, like a review at our community theater. Mm -hmm. And I, I was not, I think nine. And I, I just like lit up. I felt so like the most alive I'd ever felt at that mm -hmm. age. And I told I turned to my mom, I was like, I want to do this. And within like a week or two, I think I had my first audition for a show there. And I did Once Upon a Mattress. I played the jester. Oh. Oh. And um, <laughs> from then, from that point on, I was always in a musical, always. Like whether it was at that community theater or my high school. And then I started taking ballet and dance classes and um, I had a voice teacher and like all the things you do. And then, mm -hmm. um, there wasn't ever a moment where I was like, oh, I should go to school for this. It was just like, so when I go to college for musical theater and then move to New York and do this is, I didn't really, I think everybody in my family just understood that was my calling. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just, I think from the time I was nine, I just felt this intense passion and it gave me a sense of community and purpose. And I was like really shy and bullied as a kid, you know, everyone was like, oh, you're, and then I, they bullied me more once I started doing theater. And, um, but I kind of just kept my path, you know? Yeah. And then and here you are. And here <laughs> I am. <amazing. laughs> <laughs> and I, I do have an, another, um, related to, to, uh, to what we've been talking about, uh, another question from a fan. This is from um, Alexi Bloom. Um, like, uh, or Alex Bloom, excuse me. Um, any advice for actors looking to do this as a career? Um... Get, see see as much theater as you can uh get as much training as you can mm -hmm. because that's honestly i think the most important thing is to have to learn how to do it you can love it as much as you just it's important to love it and to be in love with it but um to treat it as a career and as a craft um you can never stop learning i'm i'm still in classes everybody i know every professional i know is still in classes um, because as you develop, mm. as you mature, different things make sense to you, different approaches make sense to you. Um, but also to not lose the fun of it. It's easy to, it's easy to get caught up in like the self critique of it all. Um, but uh, yeah, I think also like kind of not being afraid of it is also a big, mm. a big thing. Like not being afraid to fall or fail, um, just pushing through it because that can like really hold people back. Um, but I, you know, when I was like planning to go to school for this and everything, my guidance counselors and, you know, people in my family would be like, well, what's your, what's your fallback plan? And I was like, mm. oh, well, I don't plan to fall back. So <laughs> just going full steam ahead. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you can, you can see that when, yeah, just, just your audition story with falsetto is just taking that moment and just go, just going for it. And, and yeah, just and really, I, I've that. learned that along the way. It's like, t there's, there's, people always feel like they have to be so polite and like, oh, that would, you know, like tiptoe and be like, what do you, I, I, I'll do whatever you need me to do. And it's like, yeah, you want to be prepared and a likable human being, but you also, you, it's your mo, it's your time. Like you can't treat it as like, I, I, um, I'm, I'm, like intruding on your space. It's like, no, that time that you're in there is your time. So mm -hmm. you have to claim it, you know? And there's been times where I haven't always felt that way. And I've been like, oh God, I just can't wait to get out of here. But the times where you really like settle and, and are present in the moment and like appreciate the opportunity to be in the room, those are normally the times where I fly. So you got to claim your space. <laughs> that, that's, that's great advice. Yeah, claim your space. I love that. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. trying to like, some of these comments too as we go oh sure yeah um but yeah you can keep asking away i'm just oh sure yeah yeah so let's see, we I, have I, a comment I, from oh sorry go ahead I, i'm just saying hi to my friends that are in here too there's like a lot of oh yeah <laughs> my pals that are that are annoying. tuning in um yeah um thank oh someone likes my beard i'm just like can't be bothered to shave Right, right yeah, living your best quarantine life, <laughs> as we all are. <laughs> yes. Um, have I kept in touch with Eden? Absolutely. She, I just texted her this morning. Um, oh, someone asked if I was, if not theater, what would I be doing? 
I don't know if I'd be alive, honestly. Hmm. I don't know. I didn't, I never had another, it wasn't like, I was like, oh, I like this. I'm good at this, but I'll choose to do this instead. It was just like, I think I'm only good at this. <laughs> There's other <laughs> things that I like in life. I mean, that's, what I think is another, you have to, there, it can't be only like, this can't be your, which I've learned. It can't be like your only identity. Um, mm -hmm. because there's so much rejection and everything. It's like, right. you gotta have something else to live for. Um, but I, I don't know what else I would do. I've never been, I mean, right now I'm like, what do I do? I can't work, but, um, I do, I, I've been doing more TV and film in the last like five or six years, I think. Mm -hmm. And that to me right now has been, that's why I moved to LA. I was, all set on just pursuing that and not and kind of like letting musical theater be on the not the back burner but just sort of like over here for a minute mm -hmm. um so yeah i, I will say yeah the, the other two uh, is one of my favorite shows it's a really great comedy and, and you you were fantastic in it Thank um, you. as one of the insta gays <laughs> that was great really fun. Uh, yeah it seems like a really really fun fun just fun atmosphere to, to be in it it was from like the top down um chris and sarah the creators of the show are like i want to hang out with them kind of people like they're so fun and just like cut from the same cloth and um so smart and would kind of just encourage us you know from their comedic background to just be like all right what else like let's try a different take do something different like um and i think we spent like two or three weeks um shooting in new york and it mm. was with some of my really close friends which is was perfect um but i love that show and i can't wait for the next season to complete and come out so everyone can see it um i'm not on the second season i don't know <laughs> i'm supposed to say that but um so uh, some people are uh mm. but you'll it's uh I'm, i can't wait to watch i love the show i if i weren't even on it i would be watching it anyway because i think it's Really smart television. It's mm -hmm. great, great content. <laughs> Agreed. Um, and looks like we've, we've had a couple questions um, from, from our fans asking if you've had any uh, best stage mishaps. Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> I have plenty actually. <laughs> um, in, in a particular show or just like any? I guess we, we have one from, uh, from Paris uh, asking about um, during falsettos. If there oh, any. if I had any falsettos? Oh, one time, um, the, the hospital bed, it's mm. actually, you know, it's motorized, it's mechanical. And a, on a couple occasions, you know, I have to do a whole song like where the bed is sort of like at a 45 degree angle. So yeah, we're, um, uh, it, the bed wouldn't work like the battery. They were, they charged, they charge it before every show and everything, but it didn't charge. And so a couple of times they had to like exit, go get like a whole bunch of extra pillows and try to like, Max and, oh, prop it up. Do, Max and I Max and I had to sing um, a song together in the bed, and so we would struggle with that when that would happen. Um, and I think we lost like chess pieces before during the chess game. Oh, no. I don't remember. Somebody was like asking me about that the other day online, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I think one like fell off the chess. We kind of like knocked them all over at once on accident." Um, yeah. Oh, but uh, in, aside from falsettos, uh, th there was a time, I did a show called The Pirate Queen, which you mentioned at the beginning, and we were doing our out of town in Chicago. And at one point in the show, I, I was a pirate and I had to um, go up into the, the fly space and go out on the catwalk and get hooked up into a carabiner and like a fly. And so I would repel um, from the catwalk with a sword down to the stage for like a big oh, wow. battle sequence. And as I was rappelling down, like a big cargo net would fly out and um, the set, this, the whole set would change. And in Chicago, my, as I was going down, my costume got like sucked up into the carabiner. And so it was like, there's no way out of it. So I just was hanging yeah. like mid stage, like 10, 15 feet in the air, just like swinging back and forth. <laughs> so they had to stop. It was the first time we ever had to stop that show. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the stage manager came out and like cut me out of it on a ladder and yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Was so was that in front of the audience to take it? Oh yeah, yeah. It was during that. Like we were I think we were still in previews because the set was pretty complicated and mm. um we had to stop many times for other reasons, but I was the first <laughs> reason the show had to stop. So. The first one. <laughs> it's a yeah. great honor. <laughs> yeah. And I have a, another question from a fan. This is from uh, Eric uh, Eckenrode 81. He asks, what is your favorite musical besides falsetto to listen to on a repeat? I know people have a lot of time at home. What are some, some great recommendations that you have for people? What, what are your favorites? I, I love Into the Woods. I love um, <clears throat> Ragtime. It's always been one of my favorite scores. I just, that's, I saw the original production in Toronto before they came to New York and then in New York I, as a kid, it just like, has always stuck with me. Um, but right now I love the recording of Moulin Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend's show. It's so, it's so good. It honestly is um, really, really well produced. Aside from, I just love the, the selection of songs in the show and like the vocals are amazing. But the production on the album is, is like next level, I think for a, cast recording it just is really fun especially right now when we might need like a little pickup that mm -hmm. show has got some some bops in it to Definitely. raise to lift your spirits for sure yeah. Yeah. and um and, and yeah and, and, and speaking of things that people can do at home i know that, that you're featured in the new um musical film still waiting in the wings um which is going to be released digitally on may 15th um could you tell us a little about a little bit about that project and and what we can expect from it yeah, I actually shot that like a number of, I feel like it was like three, two or three years ago, like mm. in Manhattan. Um, I have like a very sweet um, sort of, I mean, it's not necessarily cameo. I mean, like a scene in the film mm -hmm. um, that happens to be with Cheetah, which was really cool. Oh, um, and Seth Dudetsky. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, we are all in a acting class together. And um, I guess that's all I can say without spoiling it. But um, it was really, it was really fun. I just got a phone call and said, "Hey, can you? Would you?" It was an. They just got an offer to do the, this movie. I was like, "Okay, that's great." <laughs> they were like, "Cheetahs in the scene," and that was enough for. They had me a cheetah, I guess. So <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, actually, we have a comment here from uh, Tommy the the Tiger. Uh, besides uh, love, love besides love watching you in a play in musical theater, you were really uh fun you really had fun singing with the skivvies too <laughs> um yeah we have a great time it's a uh, my buddies they have a band called the skivvies um we've actually done we've played san francisco a number of times mm -hmm. um and it's a great they're they're both musical theater actors and they started this band years ago they have like a ton of crazy broadway guests and travel the country i've been all over with them um but yeah people love them they're really they're really great <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got to see them at the um, the Strand Theater here in San Francisco, and they were they were so much fun. Yeah, um, I have another fan question here. Um, this is from uh, Caitlin Timothy. What was the first show that you ever did, and and how did that experience impact you? Well, my first show, my first show um, in New York was Chicago, mm. which is. Uh, pretty crazy because when I was 15 um my dad and my stepmom took me on a road trip to New York so my first time ever going to the city and that weekend I saw Chicago and Cabaret so it was like a weekend of Canner and Ebb oh, and I I I think Chicago was like a perfect music I love that musical so much and I I was like obsessed with it when I was a teenager I just thought it was I loved I loved the vocabulary of the movement and I loved the score and the, the sort of like danger of the show and the darkness of it. And I had, um, when I was in college, I had like the poster, like the show poster next to my bed in my dorm room. <laughs> and so to, it was my, actually, I think my second audition after I graduated too. Um, and I auditioned for it on, I went in a, to, to dance for it on like a Thursday. I had a call back on Friday to go to the ambassador and sing um, a little bit of good for the musical mm -hmm. director and the casting director. And then on Monday, I got a phone call that I booked the, the show. So I went, on, yeah. I went on tour with it first um, for about 10 months. 
and then I left. I put my notice in on the tour to start um, rehearsals for the Pirate Queen. But I gave myself like two months in between because I, I just, I didn't really get to experience New York at all before I left. So I just wanted to get to know like life in the city before I started rehearsing. And so then um, my agent at the time called and said, hey, would you, we just got an offer for you to play, to be the Mary Sunshine standby on Broadway before you start Pirate Queen. So you have this offer for the next few weeks. And so I was like, wait, I'm going to make my debut in the show, the first Broadway musical I saw. Like that to me was like, <laughs> what? Wow. But I just remember sitting there as a 15 year old being like, how do I get there? Like looking at those people being like, what, how do I get to where they are? I just, it seemed so unattainable. Yeah. So it just, I remember thinking like sitting in the ambassador because I got there really early. I got there before, um, like the stage manager let me in, but I, I arrived before the musical director or the casting director. So I was just sitting there waiting and I was like, <laughs> I already won. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just felt like, like being there. yeah, even if I didn't get the job, it was just like, you made it here. Yeah. So for that to be my first show was just like, surreal. Oh, that, that, that's an amazing story. Yeah. yeah. And, and what, Crazy. <laughs> and what, what is some advice that, that you would give your, your younger self? Um, look, looking back on, on your life? Um, I think uh, to be less obsessed with um, a finish line or like the results mm -hmm. to kind of try. I, I always wanted to be like the best at everything. And I wanted to just like win. I wanted to make it and get there as fast as I could. And yeah. I think I would, I would be like, Hey, relax a little bit. You can take a breath. Um, because I did have this like intense work ethic which at times was like really detrimental to my <laughs> like emotional being as a child. But mm -hmm. um, I think, I don't know, I think it came from like finally finding something I was good at and celebrated for that I just wanted to get out of my small town and like prove everybody wrong and, you know, and, and like make it uh, as fast as I could. And so I think like the process of absorbing and like learning for me, I. I wish I'd, I, I would tell myself to just like enjoy it rather than just want to be the best all the time. Yeah, and I actually have a, uh, another fan question here. This is from uh, Serafina. Uh, as what was it like going to school at Boston Conservatory? We were talking about um, yeah, your journey and your path and your education. Um, uh, I, I loved it. It was a special time. You know, it's, I love Boston. I went, when I was looking at schools, I, I uh, visited every place that I was auditioning because uh, I just, you know, it's four years of your life and it's like a very crucial time in your development. And I, I wanted to like the town I was going to be in for four mm -hmm. years, you know, aside from the school and everything. Um, so I just fell in love with Boston. It has such a great energy about it. There are so many universities there that for such an old city, it's got such a young, vibrant energy from all the students, which I, I loved. It just felt very like eclectic and people from all over and, it looked like, I don't know, it was like a, it was like New York in the sense of like a melting pot, but just because of all the people from everywhere. So it was like all walks of life. It was not like my hometown, but it wasn't as like overwhelming as Manhattan. And I thought that if I went to school in New York, I probably wouldn't have finished. I would have just like tried to book a show and been like, I made it and then like left school. Right. Um, and I wasn't ready for that. I knew that I needed like four more years to incubate and kind of, you know, marinate and learn. Um, but Boston was a very, it was like, I loved it. I loved my classmates. I loved the faculty. At the time, the school's been completely renovated, but at the time it was like not the greatest facilities. Mm. And now they're, I've gone back to teach there and it's like beautiful. Um, but I really felt like there was a huge sense of heart there. And that I don't, I just personally connected with mm. the program and I kind of tailored it to what I needed. Like I, you couldn't really get the kind of dance require the dance that I required, like as a freshman, you, you'd start that later. And I just was like, well, I'm going to do a dance minor then. And so I took like all the ballet classes with the male dance majors. And hmm. um, I wanted to like, get into the advanced jazz classes as a freshman and, you know, ch challenge myself. Cause I was like, look, we're paying a lot of money to go here. Um, mm -hmm. And it was like the one school I didn't get any scholarship money. And so I just was like, mom and dad, this is it. I have to go here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was like, I need to get my money's worth. 
Um, yeah. And I felt like I did. I really, I think, but any, I always say to, to aspiring, you know, musical theater performers that want to go to college, like, if you feel like it's the right program for you, you're going to get out of it what you put into it, essentially. Because mm -hmm. there are people that like sail through any program and don't really learn. They just want to get like the, you know, degree that says, oh, I went here. Right. Um, and there are some people that like, at the beginning, maybe you were like, oh, I'm surprised you're doing theater and then like, end up being amazing by the end of it. So you never know. Yeah, and it sounds like that really, that really ties into um yeah just you wanting to put yourself out there and just like taking taking advantage of, of everything that that life has to offer and really just just going for it yeah and, and yeah i just wanted to to thank you so much for for taking the time to to talk with us today um is there, is there anything else that you wanted to just to share with with our fans that are watching at home um i just hope that everybody is uh trying to say with positive spirits it's scary as hell mm -hmm. um try to wear a mask <laughs> and yeah. stay home yes honestly <laughs> um yeah and theater will come back it will it will return so just yeah. we got to keep our spirits up that's it i don't know what else to say um and if you are in a place where you can like give to a covid relief um you can give to Broadway Cares or the Actors Fund. Yeah, and follow me on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much again, Nick, for taking the time um, to talk to us. We really appreciate it, and, and all, all the best to, to you and Kyle. We're really, yeah, sending you all, all the healing vibes, and, and and you take care as well, you and your family. And uh, thank, thank you. you so much, everyone. Follow him at uh, the Nick Adams. <laughs> thank you, guys. Great. Thanks for joining us today, Nick. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Great, and, and that, was, uh, that was Nick Adams. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our conversation and, um, and stay tuned for, for more Instagram Lives here at Broadway SF From Home. Um, everyone take care and stay safe and well. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. <laughs>